In this video, we're going to talk about the repository pattern within Laravel. And the way I think of repositories is as a data layer in our application. And it's a very flexible data layer because it can be consuming data from multiple different sources. And we can use this repository to do logic and also to get and set data on it. So whereas a model is only going to be a representation of a single ta table in the database, our repositories um, could have multiple different models injected into them, which they can use as dependencies. Our repositories could be fetching some data from a cache or from an API. So it's a very flexible data layer that we can use to do logic in and also to get and set data. So what you're looking at right now is my lead repository. It's called Eloquent Lead. The reason it's called Eloquent Lead is because um, it is having Eloquent models injected to it. So this repository is quite tied to the Eloquent ORM. And because of that, it's tied to um, basically to using SQL databases such as MS SQL, MySQL, and other SQL-based uh, databases. So this repository is implementing the lead repo interface. If we go over to that, um, basically this interface is just defining two different methods that must be set on any implementing classes. So it has a get method, which says any classes implementing this interface um, has to fetch the leads that we're going to display. And it also has a headers function, and that has to do with displaying the table headers um, on the leads page. So let's just go back over to this repository here and see what's happening. The first thing we're doing is we're injecting a model into this repository. So one of this, um, one of this repository's uh, dependencies is an eloquent model that's going to be injected into it and it's going to be set as a property of this class and then we have two different methods so now that we've had an instance of the model injected um, into this class um, we can run some methods on that object so what we're doing here is we're going this model showable fields and if I open up the FCL model um, we'll see that showable fields is just returning an array of the different uh, fields that we want to um, select from. So going back over to the repository here, um, we're selecting, we're passing that array into the select right here, and we're limiting it to 20 results, and then we're returning the eloquent collection. The other method I have here is fetching the headers, and again, if we go back over to that FCL model, um, you'll see it's just returning an array of the different table headers. So this repository here. Um, it's taking a model as its dependency. And now if I go over to my controller, you'll see that one of the dependencies of this controller is it's taking that repository. So the advantage of injecting the repository into the controller is that this controller is going to be very testable now because when we're doing our tests, um, we're going to be able to uh, inject a mock object in this, into this controller. And we're going to be able to mock the method call and what's returned from that object. So we're just going to be um, testing this controller. Our controller isn't going to have other dependencies such as Eloquent as a dependency because it is not interacting directly with the database. It's having this repository object injected into it. So let's just take a look at the leads that are being injected in here. Um, let's just uncomment that and let's go back over to the browser. And if I refresh here, you'll see um, that is the whole Eloquent collection. If I copy this headers here and we just replace that, um, let's dump and die the headers and you'll see all of the headers there. If you watched one of the earlier videos in this series, you'll know that I was also injecting a repository into this controller. And I was doing the IOC bindings for that within uh, filters.php. However, um, I can just delete all of this right now because I've now moved it into a service provider. So um, let's go over there and take a look at that. You'll know that service providers are classes that are loaded very early within the request lifecycle in Laravel. And they're useful for doing any kind of bootstrap work uh, within our application. So what we have right here is the repo service provider. And if I go over to the app file uh, within our providers array, you'll see that I've, um, I've added that here. We have leads providers repo service provider. So let's go back over to that and see what we're doing here. So just to give you a little bit of background on this application, each of these different uh, lead websites, they display different kinds of leads. 
So if I click on this link on the header here, um, you can see there's six different lead types um, for Freight Forum. And what I didn't want to do was I didn't want to create a separate repository um, for each one of these, these different lead types. And I didn't want to create different controllers for them. I wanted to do it dynamically and I wanted to route everything through one repository and one controller. However, the one exception to that um, was the models. Each of the different lead types uh, will have their own model. So basically what I chose to do was to have a little bit more complicated code um, within here because we're doing everything dynamically. However, the advantage is um, I don't have to create different files. I don't have to create a separate repository for every different lead type and, for, uh, and I don't have to create multiple different controllers. Um, all of the different lead types are going to be routed through a single exchange controller. So if you just stick with me here, I'll try to explain what's happening. So inside this service provider, um, we are dependent on some values being set within another service provider. So because of that, I'm unable to do these bindings within the register method. I must do them in the boot method. And the reason for that is the boot method is called after all of the other service providers um, have been loaded in. So let me just try and explain what's happening here. Um, if I open up my lead service provider, um, one of the bindings we're doing is we're setting the different lead types. So for example, in Freight Forum, we are making a binding to the IOC container and it's this leads type. So our binding is called leads and we're setting a property on our leads objects called types and that's set to an associative array and the indexes of that array um, are basically the first segment, so FCL, LCL, and the value is basically the full name for it. So what I'm doing in my repo service provider is I do need access to that data. That's why we're doing it in the boot method. And then I'm just checking if the request was one of those leads. So uh, we're checking the first segment. So in the FCL's case, um, that will be slash FCL. And then we're just checking if it was in the array keys of those different lead types. If I go back over there for a second, you'll see that F FCL is right here. It's one of the keys of this array. So if we have a match here, um, then we're going to go into the body of this if statement. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set uh, this model name as a string. So the model's full path is leads entities slash FCL. So we're storing uh, that model as a string within this model variable and then we're passing it into the closure uh, using the use keyword. So let's see what's happening with this binding right here. Um, so what we're doing is we're binding the concrete class um, to lead repo interface. So if I go back over to the controller for a second, you will see um, the interface is being injected into the controller here. However, with Laravel's IOC bindings, um, this is gonna be able to be resolved into a concrete class. So what we're doing inside this service provider is we're setting, well, when that's injected into the controller, um, what class is it going to resolve to? So that's determined within this closure here. The closure is bringing in the model that we just set. So for example, for FCL, um, right now this model is just equal to FCL as a string. And then inside this closure, we're returning a new eloquent lead, and then we're passing in a new model. So this will be new FCL. So in the case of FCL, the FCL model is being passed into Eloquent Lead. So we have our entire Eloquent repository right here with the FCL model being passed in and that is being set as a binding for the lead repo interface. So now that we've made this binding right here, I think we can just copy all of this and let's just go down a little bit lower and let's um, dump and die uh, this value right here and let's just change bind to make so that we can resolve it. And let's go back over to the browser here and refresh. And you'll see what we have is the eloquent lead repository. So that you can see that we've successfully made our binding here. We've bound the repository to the interface. So whenever this gets injected into the controller, um, it is going to be instantiated an object here. And we're going to be able to call all these different methods um, within the index function and then uh, our site is gonna resolve just fine. So remember that we had an interface injected into our controller and this interface is going to be resolved into a concrete class. It's going to resolve to a repository 
And I just want to show you the really flexible thing about using the repository pattern in Laravel is all we are going to need is we're going to just replace this binding um, within a new uh, with a new implementation. So here I just have another class which is called new couch DB lead and we're passing we're just sort of mocking a dependency right here. And CouchDB is a NoSQL database. So if I go over to the class I have right there, um, really we're not passing anything into the constructor. In this case, we're just passing in a string that says dependency. Um, however, we are implementing the two different methods um, from the interface. Remember in the lead in repo interface, we have the get and the headers method. So those methods are both present here and we're just returning couch leads and couch headers. So if I go over to the exchange controller right here, um, so remember we've, we've made this change now um, within, the, within the binding. We've commented out um, the eloquent repository and we're now using the couch DB one. So if I go into the controller here, um, right now let's just, let's just start with the leads. So let's place that within the uh, DD function and we'll go over to the browser and you'll see that that's outputting couch leads right now. And if we change this to the headers, let's just pass this in here and refresh. And now we're getting the headers. So really um, changing to a new implementation was as simple as just creating that new implementation and then replacing one line um, within our service provider here where we made the binding. So really the big advantage here is you can see that how decoupled our code is right now. So you can imagine some websites that are using PayPal as their payment provider and then suppose they wanted to change to Stripe. I think most websites would have to change code in a lot of different places and it might, e it might not even be possible, possible depending on how coupled their code base is to the, um, to the PayPal code. However, if you use this repository pattern and you're injecting interfaces into your controller, um, really all you're going to need to do is you're going to write that new implementation. So if you were using PayPal before, you would write the new um, Stripe implementation and then you would just change a single line here within the binding and you would go from PayPal to using Stripe. So I think the main advantages of using the repository pattern are that we're going to be able to introduce that extra data layer into our application we're going to be able to inject dependencies into it, such as injecting our eloquent models into it. And the result of that is our models are going to stay really clean. And the only things that I'm going to add to this model are things that directly relate um, to the table it represents. So I might put a few functions in here that directly relate to this table. And I'll also put things like the relationships that this table has with other tables, such as belongs to and has many. I will put those things into the model. However, a lot of the different um, logic with retrieving data from my application, uh, that will all be done within the repository.